Welcome to chapter four of tutorial one for collections managers on Saurus. So let's carry on with creating our object. So on, we've completed the fields in the first tab and on the second tab, you'll see the description fields. This is where we have general descriptive information about the object. So our high chair, um, it's uh, the form type it's quite a loose field, so we have things like beads, um, uh, uh, paintings, um, various forms of the, the object, which um, it's almost a temporary field as a step towards the formal classification terms and the classified name. Um, and we've kept it very loose because we've been migrating a lot of data from various different types of collections, and this helps curators to clean up the information as they use the uh, use Cyrus. Um, I don't know whether chair exists, but here we go. So we've got various op options for chair. We might, might not have high chair. Um, let's have a look. We don't. So I'm going to pick uh, or create high chair and it's going to enter this into, into Cyrus as, a, uh, as an option for future reuse. So we can query the system uh, for high chair. So the material type, you can choose various ones. I'm probably going to change this into an auto search field as well. Um, but for now, let's say it's made of wood. Uh, let's go down to wood. There we go. Let's use maybe mahogany wood. And maybe it is two types of wood. So maybe mahogany and iron wood. Um, so under here, we could say legs made of mahogany, um, seat made of iron wood. And a technique type, um, you know, if it was um, <coughs> woven, um, then we can, you know, talk about the technique used to make the object. Um, uh, it's like watercolor for paintings. Yes, so various, various options. Uh, related to how something was made rather than the actual form. Um, I'm not going to specify a technique type under this, uh, for this particular chair. Uh, the colors, maybe it had um, a red seat and a blue, um, blue legs. So you can separate the terms out with commas and a space. So let's add yellow as well. So we have three colors, and under my distinguishing features, I'm going to say red seat, blue stripes, legs, yellow, um, yellow spots on back, so something like that. Okay, so that explains what the, the colors are that you've used. Um, inscriptions, this is used typically with coins or belts, um, bottom of your teacup, um, so I don't, maybe there is an inscription on the bottom of this chair, so let's, um, let's pick something like um, aid by CP where is our inscription, um, then measurement types, so we can pick the type of measurement that we are going to measure this by, and you can use any or all of these. So we can say the height of the chair is maybe uh, three. Um, let's do three hundred centimeters. And another item, and let's do say the width of the chair. Uh, let's say two hundred centimeters. This would be quite a big chair. Okay, and in our dimension comment, we can explain in more detail what we are measuring and how we're measuring it by. So again, only use this if you if there's a particular question in mind. Coins, we often measure the sizes. Um, paintings, it's the, the width by height. Um, you know, might have storage considerations. It might be because of um, there might be something particularly significant about the size, and you 
of measuring in more detail. Um, so use this if it's relevant to you. Um, the next tab uh, is object history. So the age is in years, so you can have it two years, so years, so it might be that it was made between 1920 and 1930. Or if we unsure and it was just around 1920, we could have just ticked off, uh, show in date, take that off and specify 1920 as the year it was made. I'm going to leave it as between two, two years. Uh, and in the age comment, you know, you can um, add more information, Edwardian, Victorian, or particular periods, apartheid era, chair, um, or, you know, whatever it is that uh, you might be referring to. Um, for archaeologists, geologists, paleontologists, um, you might be looking at a particular geological period. Um, again, this might not be so relevant to social historians. Um, for the maker, this is the painter, artist, person who made this particular item. It could be a company. Um, so we might say, um, let's see, um, I don't know if Ford is on the, um, no, it's not on the list, but let's pick, I'm going to say it was made by me. And, and then I can say, Um, you can obviously add multiple items. Remember, it's very important to create proper profiles for uh, these formal fields where it's re referring to a profile of a person or organization. Again, that allows you to query the database by those um, by those nodes later on. So if I was looking at all Swiss watches or um, you know, items made by Nelson Mandela, um, I could query the, the system for those kinds of items. Production place is pretty self explanatory. Where it was made? Let's say in Durban. Um, let's go down. And then, whoever used the object, again, refer to the person whoever used it. Uh, you can amplify that with more comments about that particular person and or the organization that used it. Um, the place of use and collector's information as well might be that it came into the museum by a collector who worked for the museum or didn't work for the museum, might have sold it to the museum. Again, you can specify their details. Cultural association, we use um, like Sulu um, or Sutu. Um, so there's various terms that you, you can pick. Uh, and if it doesn't exist, so let's see, PD exists, um, does, uh, well, let's say, That also exists, but uh, let's let's pick something. Um, let's see. Um, Inuit. Yeah. So Inuit doesn't exist. Um, so that'll be added to the system for future reuse. So let's go on. Um, <coughs> place of use. I'm just going to leave and ignore that for now. Um, date of use. Again, you can use. To two, two dates um, or just one date around the time that the object was used. Provenance is probably one of the most important fields. And describe this in full how the object um, was obtained um, and where it came from. Um, you can use the WYSIWYG editor to use colors and bold and underline in this formal description about the provenance. Um, so write that up much of the information will often come from these standardized fields. So you might be talking about the maker and the, the artist and um, perhaps the a painter donated some of their, his or her paintings to a family member and it then ended up in collector. Um, so you can really you know, write up a full history about this particular object. References citations, those are books, journal articles, websites that reference this particular object and you can use as many as you like. Um, please don't enter the actual text from a, of a, a copyrighted journal, um, simply cite the, the article. 
Okay, so let's stop this chapter here and then we'll move on to chapter 5 to complete our object.